Hey, if you're new to the channel, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. I want to bring something to y'all attention. I'm going to be discreet and I'm going to take it slow today. I want y'all to really pay attention to one thing. And like, yo, got to even bringing this up and putting this on the forefront. It kind of make me speculate and think twice about if Glorilla was the main one who told Angela Simmons. I was in Chicago. But he bust the winter time out. We need to drop a song. Somebody drop the song. Like, well, I don't stay young and I ain't gonna understand it. Y'all may understand. I wasn't feeling it. So when he called me, when Cub called me, we're like, man, drop this toy. I put a little thought in it. And when I came back to Kelly and got to the house and listened to the music, I'm like, okay, we're gonna drop this song. But we're gonna drop 21 more songs and drop a whole mixtape. I want y'all to understand when these women get together, especially if you're still in the street, all her friends know what happened with Dolph. So for her to take a picture with Dolph two weeks before Dolph gets sent up, then next thing you know, you signed to his ops label. Like at the end of the day, we know for a fact that a lot of people. They sent back looking at Glorilla like, man, your credibility is shot now. Because for the next two times, every time he have a show, his show gets shot up. Like, why he with you? Like, y'all got to really understand, this is coming from Memphis and Atlanta. This is sad because in all actual reality, we know for a fact that this is a revolving door. And a lot of people sit there and look at this like, big junk. He didn't get a bond. And from what they saying in Memphis, they said they did him like DJ Pat. They said that they just let Govan out just like DJ Pat. That's why Govan going through what he going through. A lot of people sit back and look at it like, hold on. I rock with PRE more than I rock with CMG. Number one, end of the door. Like at the end of the day, a lot of people sit there and play both sides when all actual reality you can't even play both sides. You can't be mad at no side. They was beefing. It's RP Dolph for nothing, man. If you rocking with Dolph, man, throw them 999s down in the comment section because there's a lot of people sit here and look at this like, Key Glock bust that man window. He did not like that. He was out of town. Once he came back from LA, he asked some man, why, why would you bust the window, man? And you already know we already beefing with them. Now I got to do extra stuff. Like, I want y'all to understand, Key Glock start laughing. He start laughing. And I want y'all to really pay attention to it. Key Glock is not related to Young Dolph. Key Glock is only around Young Dolph because me and Jay said, could you put my nephew into play? Paper Rao Wu, he knew it was going to catch up with him once he had his pants down while they was doing a hit. You can't do no hit and dress the same way that you dress in public. Like, at the end of the day, I know a lot of people at a certain criteria and they feel because they rapping with Dolph that they own or, or whatnot. Y'all got to really look at this because Big Moochie Great, he already said that Snoop Bands was the main one told Paper Rock Wu before he even hopped out the car. Man, pull your pants up, man, so you won't fall and so you be able to control the drink. Y'all got to understand, they said the one in the front with the head on. Y'all got to understand, the one who had the fisherman head on, Hey, the Bass Pro Shop said that three people walked in and it was two dudes who matched the description of who sent Young Dolph up. Mr. Pierce already said who was there at the end of the day. That's why Paper Raoul right, rushed over there and started doing a turkey drive. And in all actual reality, we know for a fact the man Snoop Bands, as soon as he walked out, the look, the truck, y'all know the U-Haul that they use, the one that Makita Raven them said they can't park in front of their store. Y'all gotta understand. The man Paper Rob Wu say, hey man, fix your hair, man. You said you went to the, you feel me, the barber shop. Like at the end of the day, his arms was under. Under the, the thing. Like at the end of the day, if you at the barber shop, what you gonna do? If the cape over you. You gonna lift the cape up. A little bit and you're gonna be texting your homie. Say Dolph text you two times. 
from what the reports and the examiner reports are stating when they examined his phone and went through all his unlocked but y'all gotta understand the apps that he had on his phone y'all know them apps them vault apps at the end of the day we know for a fact you can have any number with the vault app any number if they call your phone it's going straight to the vault and you just check it as if you had your notifications turned off for your messenger or you had your notifications turned off for your app message I want y'all to really pay attention to what's going on because in all actual reality, the way that they pulled up in that white car, man, they already knew it was over with. They knew it was over with as soon as they pulled up in that white car, boy. I told y'all, this man, this man literally, he jumped out there. He hopped out the car. He instantly, he bell out the car. Next thing you know, they, Snoop Dan's already tried to grab him like, hey, man, pull your pants up. He had on the same Jordans. That he had on in multiple pictures on Instagram. This is where they where it come into play of being the dumbest criminals. I want y'all to understand. PRE knew for a fact that CMG they couldn't get the ups on them unless he let his guard down, man. I want y'all to really pay attention to it because Young Dolph already said out his mouth. He said, "Man, I gotta watch the people around me, but I don't know who to watch." Snoop Bands already said like. Man, Paper Route Woo, man, we got to take him up out the box. And this is what literally, like, they they, they still puzzled by this. And Mia J said, why would Key Glock do it? Why would Key Glock even keep himself distant from them if they didn't do it? Like, I want y'all to really look at this because it's sad that it had to happen to Dolph. But in all actual reality, we know for a fact Dolph put too many people on. And for him to get sent up over an open verse... Like at the end of the day, what was your purpose of asking Young Dolph for an open verse? Just so that you, what, what were you going to do with it? You was going to put it on your album and make it seem like you the one that came up with the song? I want y'all to understand, man. Key Glock already told that man, it, it ain't going to go down like that. We're going to do this a whole nother way. That's why when Mia J walked in, she already said, the dudes that was in the white car, had the dude, the other dude driving, and the dude that was driving was Black Youngster people, man. I want y'all to understand that, man. Black Youngster, he falling back because he know for a fact that too many people know that he was there. Y'all gotta understand who was in the back seat of that of that Bentley truck. I want y'all to throw them one one ones in the comment section if y'all know who was in the back seat of that Bentley truck. Big Juke ain't pull up there by itself, knowing that, come on then, knowing that it's going down. He pulled up 4D. The, the truck was pulled up. Y'all got to understand, man, that's an expensive truck for him to have at a crime scene. And then he still rode around in it every day. That's why Angela Simmons said, y'all moving. Y'all moving funny. Like, at the end of the day, I'm still going to be with you, Gotti, but y'all moving funny. This is what goes to show you can't trust the people who has an ulterior motive against your gang. Y'all know for a fact that Young Dolph knew Paper Route was going to take off. Once Paper Route took off, Young Dolph already knew he was going to get the camo cars. He knew for a fact that he was going to have at least three Mercedes. He knew he was getting that C8. Like at the end of the day, I want y'all to pay attention to it because when, when Dolph had took off, they already knew it was over with because we already know for a fact the water, man, they in hot water right now, man. They dropped the ball. They dropped the ball, man. And I know a lot of people sit there and look at it like these the same people who basically told them, y'all need to y'all need to get up in the truck instead of running up out of the truck. You can't run up out the car like that and you knowing other people supposed to run up and get them up out of there. I want y'all to really pay attention to that, man. This is a revolving door. We have to really open our eyes to the fact of what's really going on. They, they supposed to be instantly telling Dolph, hey, man, watch behind you, though. Next thing you know, Makita Raven, them, they people who was working in there at the moment, they didn't even give him a notice. It was no notice. Like, at the end of the day, we have to really look at that, man, because one person, Mia J, she pulled up. After everybody cleared it out, after they took the tape down, and y'all know when Maurice was still mopping, she pulled up. She pulled her phone out, and this, and I want to send my condolences out to his family. 
number one is I'm just going to get my commentary on the things that's going on. And I, w I really want y'all to understand, man. You can dig deep if you want to and go get the proof from Memphis because it's out there, man. If you got your ear to the streets, you know for a fact you ain't really got to look too far. I want y'all to understand, man. PRE hasn't been the same since Young Dolph been gone. Too many people sit back there and say, Key Glock, man, you should have dusted off everything that was in there before you even went in there, man. Like, at the end of the day, I want y'all to really pay attention to this, man, because in all actual reality, if we open our eyes, we can understand what's really going on instead of looking at the, the BS. Like, at the end of the day, man, we know for a fact that it's too many people who didn't root for Dolph, man. They wouldn't root for Dolph, and if they was really on Dolph's side, they wouldn't let Dolph get sent up in their cookie shop. At the end of the day, man, the tax place is right on the side, and we already know for a fact that Maurice was in the laundromat. He put too many clothes up in there, and why, why would you even try to come back? Like, at the end of the day, why would you try to come back and make yourself look guilty? That's why when they put Marcus Thorne in the handcuffs like that and walked him to the car, and his dreads were shaking, and he's like, man, y'all got to really understand, Maurice Hill was all the way back. Like past the tax place, you know how when you walk out of Makita's, you gonna open the door. Like you gonna look over. Once you look over, once you do close the door, you will be able to see the tax place right here. It's boarded up. It's all boarded up. Like at the end of the day, it's right in the middle of the laundromat in Makita's. I want y'all to really pay attention to this because the perimeter direction of where Maurice walked to, he went in the laundromat came back out that's what gave him the dead giveaway that's why the mpd they already said we gotta watch him they said we gotta watch him they said maurice he had to have something to do with it because he his car parked right there in the middle of the crime scene like at the end of the day and all that reality is too many people who know for a fact that young Dolph, the cars that he had up there he had the white car up there which was marcus Thorn car and it was the like at the end of the day, like youngster had the keys, man. Y'all gotta understand that, man. And it's sad that Money Bag Yo even got himself into this because they mistaken Ari truck for Big Jig truck when whole time Ari and Big Jig got their truck from the same Bentley dealer. Y'all gotta really understand that, man. And just because Ari got the chrome on the side, Big Jig don't got the chrome on the side of the Bentley truck. Y'all gotta really look at that, man. The chrome piece at the bottom is the only thing that Big Jig had on the truck. This is what, like, it, it identified who truck it was once they did the analysis and the fingerprints came back off the truck. I want y'all to understand, Big Jig know for a fact that if they wouldn't have told all them females what was going down, he wouldn't have never got caught. I want y'all to let me know how y'all feel about that, man, because at the end of the day, we know for a fact it's sad that he even had to go through that. Free Big Jook, man. R.P. Dolph, man. Like, at the end of the day, man, they let Govan out, and he was the one who carried it out. I want y'all to understand that, man. Once Govan walked out that building, his cousin was waiting on them outside. They was already deep, three deep, and they had two cars behind them because they already knew for a fact that they was going to be on their bumper. CMG got their inside beef going on, and Govan, he trying to stay out of it. Govan trying to fall back because he know for a fact they know he snitched. If he didn't snitch, he would have never got out. They would have never lured the bun, released their thing. I want y'all to really look at that because the people who was on their phone, they had their phones up like this. They was recording everything. Once you got your phone up and it's out and it's recording, it's over with, man. Like at the end of the day, we really got to be mad for this because... We know for a fact Young Dolph put a lot of people on. And the people who he put on, half of them didn't even ride. Only Kenny Money was the only one who stepped out there and went sliding for his homie. He said he ain't got to say no words because what's easily said don't need to be explained. Like, I want y'all to really look at that, man, because in all actual reality, if you from the streets, you know for a fact you can't go out there with your head chopped off like a chicken, man. Like, at the end of the day, you know for a fact you got to be equipped with them things on. You got to have them blickies in the car or in the trunk wrapped in the shirt. Like, y'all got to understand this, man. Because in the all actual reality, we know for a fact. The thumpers that, he, that, that they use 
them the same numbers that they said they used when they was blowing past Marcus Thorne when he was instantly trying to get up out of Makita's and then by straight job even turning around and blowing like this, that gave them an easy dead giveaway because they already said like, hold on, Marcus Thorne, that's how they was able to get the good shot, the good angle of him even being right there. And this goes to show that a lot of people sit right there and look at it like, Marcus Thorne, he was going through the park like he actually, he took, he took right off, started blowing. Boom, 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 boom. He blew a couple times, man. Next thing you know, they answered, they got up out of there. Like at the end of the day, man, once they pulled off, Marcus Thorne already knew it was over with because he had to run back in there to his brother. In all actuality, we know for a fact that too many people who get took it down all because they in their phone. They in their phone. They said Dolph was in his phone. This is coming from Makita Raven, quote unquote. I want y'all to really understand this, man, because in all actuality, we know for a fact that it's sad that this had to happen, but Young Dolph, I wish Young Dolph would have moved up out that hood, man. He should have never been standing around the hood knowing that half of them in the hood don't like him. Now, I'm going to take a moment of silence just to get that across, man. Young Dolph had too many people in his corner, man. And there's no way he got sent up at his untimely demise without even knowing that this was going to happen. Like, y'all got to understand, he thought he was shooting a music video. Snoop Bands, his hair wasn't even cut, so where was you at, buddy? And word around Memphis, they looking for Big Moochie Great. Y'all got to understand, Castelia, that's where Young Dolph used to reside. And a lot of people know for a fact that Big Moochie Great he not finna be about that life if his own people looking for him. Like at the end of the day, man, in all actual reality, we can really look at it for what it is. Like we already know for a fact that MPD they ain't playing no games and once the feds jumped in and they got Govan and they got Straight Drop, Cornelius Smith and Big Juk, it was over with because Black Youngster already said that money bag, yo, he implemented himself up out of it. All because of one thing, he didn't want to go down. And we already know for a fact, he didn't want to go down for what happened to Dolph because all of this songs. They use your Gotti music. All them diss songs he made over them years. Y'all know what I'm talking about. All them, I'm a, a real, y'all know what I'm talking about. All them songs that he made, they already used it against Big Juk. So this is a sad situation that had to happen, but we know for a fact that a lot of people, they don't want this to really go down the wrong route because Big Juke, he didn't deserve to get snatched up like that without a bun, and Big Juke, he couldn't get out. So y'all know for a fact, if you can't get out, that means somebody told if somebody already out. Everybody locked up, but go there. Everybody locked up, but go there. I'ma just let that soak in. How do y'all feel about Govan not really doing what he said he was going to do? He said he's going to carry out the plan instantly. Go on ahead and let them hit up Dolph while he watch. Y'all got to understand, man. They gave him the keys to the back of Makita. This is why Black Youngster had them other dudes pull up just to protect them boys. Y'all already know them boys here, Straight Drop and Cornelius Smith. They just released one of the other dudes, y'all. The dude with the dreads. That was the main one who Shondell Burnett told, you need to get out of town before they come get you. He ain't get out of the city. If he would've got out of the city, that would've never happened to him, man. Because in all actual reality, you can really pay attention to it and take it for what it is. If you sit back and you really pay attention to it, Young Dolph told them the game. He had to learn it on his own. Yo Gotti didn't want to tell him the game. Yo Gotti wanted him to do all them songs and lead open verses. So Yo Gotti could basically sign Young Dolph and promote the songs that him and Young Dolph did, knowing that it's a hit the whole time. He 
he don't want Young Dolph really in the mix. Like at the end of the day, man. Like we know this, man, and we know how the streets work. If you're from the streets, man, throw them two two twos in the comment section, man. Because y'all gotta get heard too. If y'all from the streets, y'all gotta get heard. Like I know a lot of y'all wanna speak y'all peace, man. just gonna sit back and we just gonna watch it unfold because they let two people out the two people who they let out they just let one dude out today and when i said they only let one person out that's when they only let go van out they let one person out today and dude they literally dropping a whole case from him say he had no indications that he was there that he was involved that he knew anything that was about to occur or happen or anything See the type of people that we are We the type of people that look at it And be like you know what He ain't used no common sense When he went and took that money That's why Govan in the situation he in And Big Juk He didn't even want no money for it He passed the money down He gave Yo Gotti 20k And Yo Gotti put up another 20k And then they carried it out man Y'all gotta understand man Everything that was dished out It went to the right people and they did that to Dolph, man. R.P. Dolph, man, because I wish he was still here. I wish he would still survive it just like he survived the Carolina incident. When y'all, y'all already know when they were shooting in Carolina and Black Youngster got locked up. Yo Gotti just did a show. I want y'all to really look at that, man, because they wanted to take Young, Young Dolph out then. Young Dolph was supposed to have been gone then. They was already tired of him. Jay-Z already said he keeping this stuff away from Yo Gotti. Yo Gotti can't come to none of his parties, y'all. Y'all got to understand that, man. And they, by them keeping their distance, it makes it to where once Jigga get done in the studio, Jigga leave 20 minutes to an hour before Yo Gotti even get there. This goes to show he don't want to be around that, and especially while they hot. You don't want to be around your homies while they hot. You know if your homies hot, you finna fall back from them, man. You know you're not even finna go out there and stick your head out there. And in all actuality, we know for a fact the cookie shop, that footage shows Yo Gotti brother across the street. In all actuality, man, we really got to pay attention to that because a lot of people sat back and thought it was a game. They thought it was a game, and then they came and picked them up. You got to understand. They ran Big Juke's place before they even put him in the car. Y'all know how it is. If you riding around with tinted windows and you got four dudes in the car and the tent ain't 5% tent, it's you got all them other percentage of tent, y'all know for a fact you're going to instantly see shadows in the car, four shadows. That's why they pulled them over. Too many shadows in the car. You got to have the windows down, bird's eye view. Like, at the end of the day, that's why Big Jill got into the situation he in. And a lot of people, they already looking at the blue surgical mask that he had on with them gloves. Like, y'all got to understand, Big Jill was ready to hop out and run down. Big Jill, he knew what he was doing, man. That's why a lot of people sit there and say Big Jill was the main one who could have basically avoided all this from happening. Or he could have basically stopped it because he was the one who with the walkie talkie in his hand and he had his other iPhone in his other hand. He talking to money bag yo on FaceTime and he instantly bah! to everybody who in there with them gloves and them hoodies. Y'all gotta really pay attention to that because it's sad but in all actual reality this could have happened to Yo Gotti. And Yo Gotti I got a message for you. You already know man. You Yo Gotti you could have easily just called it off, man. You could have called it off before it got too deep, man. You know you could have called it off. They put that man in the mix. They a. Hey, they put that man in the mix, man. And in all actual reality, we know for a fact, once you get put in the mix, it's over with. It's over with. Y'all already know that. That's why people walking around pulling their shirt up over their face like they got a mask imitating what Straight Drop did. I want y'all to really understand what's really going on because in all actuality, 
ain't no cuts in this, man. They was cut though when they did that to Dolph, man. A lot of people sit back and look at it and don't really take it for what it is, but in all actuality, like if you from the streets, you already know, they tweaked because they got caught a year and a half later, almost two years. Was it worth that? And then you, and y'all, your brother locked up, so they got y'all, they got y'all on the radar. They got the old girl who had the bonnet on. She was the main one with, with the yoga pants who they kept on saying, you gotta watch her. You gotta watch her. She was the main one opening doors for all the people in SimG. And you know for a fact that BGE, they know they ain't rocking with PRE, regardless of what's going on, but I rock with PRE, and I'ma stay rocking with PRE. At the end of the day, we know for a fact it's too many people who got caught up in the middle of this, man. Y'all know for a fact that you go out there, hop right in your car, empty, run into your ops, man. Like, at the end of the day, this is why Young Dolph sat back and said, man, bruh, I ain't trusting everybody, bro. I'm gonna go to where I gotta go and come right back. This is why he was moving the way that he was moving and people didn't understand the way that Young Dolph was moving. Young Dolph was moving the way that he was moving. He knew for a fact Govan was from, he knew Govan and them didn't like him, man. When he was on that stage with Yo Gotti, he already knew at some point in time they was gonna have to see each other again. And this is why the fans is really looking into this really deep because they saying like, hold on, they been beefing for these many years and Yo Gotti, he been signing these artists and then once he signed Black Youngster, nah, Char that happened in Charlotte, nah, all these incidents occurring. I want y'all to really pay attention because when the fans come, they got a 99% conviction rate. You can't be out there reckless, man, acting crazy, man. You gotta really do what you say you gonna do, man. If you gonna slide on the ops, slide on the ops. If you gonna be in the house, be in the house, man. Like at the end of the day, man, you know what you doing, man. Yo, got in them know what they did. Big Jook, and I'm and I'm gonna take a moment of silence, man, because I know Big Jook locked up right now. Big Jug got the paperwork off the door, man. They already said Big Jug. Once he walked out, he already got the paperwork that they was investigating. Y'all gotta understand, man, it was the CI up in their camp who basically told. And this is why Govan got out, man. This is why they speculating and thinking that Govan was the one that did it when Govan was the one who basically he pushed for a lower bond, just like anybody else would do it. Just because he got out there, I mean, he snitched. But at the end of the day, we know how it is now. A lot of people snitching and ain't getting violated for it, man. Like at the end of the day, they already said in Memphis, you snitch on anybody in Memphis, especially if they in PRE, BGE, or CMG, if I'm not mistaken. They say they gonna get down on you. They say they gonna run down on you. You gotta move out the city. And they gonna make you pack your bunk. Like, a lot of people be ducking their taco. Knowing the whole time that they real life ain't about that life. In all actual reality, we know for a fact that it's too many people who sit back. And they, they, they could have easily settled it a whole different way. If they would have settled it a different way, Young Dolph would have never got sunk up because of an open verse. Like at the end of the day, we already know this and people sit back, they tweaking. They tweak, like for real. The way that Yo Gotti opened the door for 42 Doug, it goes to show that 42 Doug, once he do finally get out, they already said money back, yo, I already exposed him and, and dropped the load. That's why the feds came and got 42 Doug for the stuff he was doing in his hometown. They said money back, yo, was the one who opened his mouth. And I know a lot of people say like, man, that's Memphis business. That's Memphis business. I understand that, but you gotta understand what goes on in Memphis stays in Memphis. So we all gotta really pay attention to that, man. This is something that we all, can really look at and really put a finger on and be like, why would money bag yo even put itself in that predicament to tell on his homie? Because when the pressure come, the pipes bust. <clears throat> Ooh. 
cool though. It's deep. When the pressure, hey, when that pressure on man is over with, man, y'all already know for a fact that CMG, they not gonna be the same when they take the head, which is your guy. They just already gone. That was the assistant. I want y'all to really look at that man because it's no way they blocked off the back of his car and then hopped out the car and ran all the way around the no they said they already was blowing from on the inside and from what they already said in Memphis they said that Houston speaking right now they said Houston they coming out and they coming out with with them facts y'all I want y'all to throw in the comment section where y'all from man I want to know where my subscribers from if y'all been on the channel like at the end of the day if you're new to the channel man welcome to the channel man I want y'all to really look at that because from what they saying, and this is sad, and in all actuality, we know how the street works, so we can't be mad about it. They said they sent shots from inside the cookie shop. That's how Dolph ended up like this with the arm out the window. You see, if somebody was inside of this, this podcast that I'm sitting there, I'm sitting in the podcast right now. Somebody was inside this podcast. Now this podcast having windows. If they was the instantly, bo 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 bo, I instantly fall back and my arm go out the window and whatever's in my way, it instantly knock it out the way like push it across the room. That's why they said one of Young Dolph's shoes was over there by the counter. And I want y'all to understand, Young Dolph didn't wear the same shoes over and over again. No. He had on the same clothes for like three days, man. Y'all gotta pay attention. He he saw them when he was at that gas station, man. It said it had to happen, man, but in all actuality, man, we live right now. By us being live right now, we know for a fact that everybody who sat there and saw Young Dolph phone over there under that chair, when once Rave and them grabbed that phone, y'all already knew what it was. It was over with because he don't have his phones locked because he ain't got nothing to hide. Young Dolph, he, all the stuff he had in his phone, they instantly. You feel me? They they got the codes to all his safes and everything, man. Y'all got to understand, man. That's where he get all his Apple Pay, everything, man. It's sad, man. But at the end of the day, we know for a fact, Raven them got that phone. It was over with from them because they saw they saw what they needed to see. They deleted what they needed to delete. It's no traces to Makita Raven them even saying that he can shoot that music video in there. And what's so ironic, Jeremy, he already said, Makita Raven, she instantly, she deleted the stuff out of the phone from the day that it actually, like, y'all gotta understand, the day that he went up there and he was promoting their cookies in that white truck, they, she deleted everything about the phone. Even from that day, this is what goes to show they tampered with his phone. And the feds is not liking that, y'all. 